Oh, what's up, Internet? Welcome once again to the Free to Play Cast, brought to you by MMOBomb.com, your home for all things free to play related. I'm your host, Mike Byrne, aka Magic Man, and this is episode 390. 390, inching ever closer to number 400. Of course, we've got E3 to wrap up, and I'm sure we'll get, we'll deviate from free to play a little bit. This is like one of the times that Jason and I. You know, for years now, even before Q was here, we kind of excused ourselves from having to talk about free-to-play a little bit. But yes, we do have free-to-play news from E3. We've got some updates to previous week's good ideas, bad ideas, which has just like continued to be a segment for the last month because we have updates on the previous good idea, bad ideas, and some new ones that are like, "Eh, is this a good idea or a bad idea? And then I've got a couple of questions on what exactly the hell is going on in some news pieces Chat is joining us live, as always, twitch.tv slash MMOBomb, 1 p.m. Eastern on Fridays. And our free-to-play streams are Monday and Friday, myself, at 2 p.m. Uh, Thursdays at 2 p.m. is Troy Blackburn. I'll explain that in a minute. And uh, occasionally, Jason will throw himself in there on Wednesdays. So, a lot to get to today. Let's introduce the host. First up, Mr. Jason Winter himself. How are you, sir? Yeah, I think you need to explain, Troy. I there. <laughs> he requires explanation. <laughs> Troy definitely requires explanation. I have no he's, idea if he's, he's an instruction chat. manual too. I think yeah, an instruction manual. Uh, also on the line, Ms. Quinlan Bowers. What's up, Q? It has actually been a better week. I went out and, and had dinner, like or lunch, for the first time in public in a freaking year, and got my gay glitter converse complimented on by an entire family. There you go. I mean, that's two for two. Two for three two. Three for three. The Genshin Impact things are framed. Oh, yeah. Can you hold that up and show them? Uh, so remember when we did the unboxing here of, like, the Genshin Impact box, we had no idea what was in. I sent a bunch of that stuff to Q. I kept, like, one or two baubles, and I sent the rest to Q. Well, this is what Q did with the postcards Ooh. portion of what we uh, what I sent her. Wow. Yeah, that looks sharp, nice, huh? doesn't it? So I was given, um, for my birthday a year ago, I was given a $100 gift certificate to get some stuff framed. It was actually supposed to be for some prints that I had bought for Pride last year. Uh, but they're five by sevens. They're really easy to find frames yeah. for. These things are <laughs> such an unusual shape that I was like, maybe that's where I should put the 100 And it ended up costing $128 to get that done. That's so. beautiful. Jeez, I was- I was just thinking that. I was like, that was good on my wall. Yeah, Jace, Jace is right in chat. Jason, you need some frames. You need some frames. <laughs> Give me a $100. Gift you, gift you have, you have that, that family picture we've shown on the show behind you before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that, that one. Back to the wall there. Yeah, just put it, but if you put it right there, it would be hidden by your head. At least where it's at, we Wherever. can see it. <laughs> put it on the wall right behind you so it doesn't look like there's anything on the wall. That would be tremendous. Guys, I hung something on my wall finally. Oh, shit. <laughs> I can't see a whole lot of wall behind me because I'm right up next to you. You, know, you, you and you Q have get, space. Don't you get enough random stuff, though, that there has to be something you could frame? You know, I, I admit I thought about the uh, about this thing. Remember this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I that, just, yeah. I thought about like, putting a different message up there every week, but I thought that'd be just too much trouble. <laughs> Once a week, he changes the message, but nope. that's too much trouble, nope. guys. Like, if I do this, <laughs> I one, I got to hang it up. In, like, in places and stuff. I got to hang it up. Whatever. And then two, oh, my God, I got to change the message every yeah, week. <laughs> nah, well, message, screw it. Next message will be using the words F and U. So there years you ago, <laughs> years ago, I worked at a gas station, and this was before they had the, the digital signs. They had those big letters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We used oh, yeah. The and they, and they would make you run. To put up there. Right. They would make you run out there in the middle of your shift because somebody down the road changed their prices on their gas, so they needed to change their prices to, you know, to, mm-hmm. to, to, to like, match. Oh, and God. you'd just be out there trying to, like, get the stupid <laughs> suction, suction cup. cup thing. <laughs> Well, let's get to it. I think we'll slide over, get started with the news, and kick off some E3 thoughts. We give things that suck. It's in the bag. It's in the bag. Finally, E3 is over. The Summer Game Fest continues through the next couple of weeks with basically like one thing every other day or something like that. But uh, the 
overabundance of all of the news falling out of all of the conferences is over. It's all in the bag. It's been a hectic week covering it here on MMO Bomb, doing the the shows on Ready Check Radio. Jason and I are going to do in-depth with E3 Days 2, 3, and 4 with Yod tomorrow on Gaming Gumbo uh, on Ready Check Radio. I'll be live on (laughs) Mr. Happy's channel tonight for a E3 version of State of the Realm. Uh, So, yeah, I'm going to be very happy when this weekend is over because I've already done like five different shows slash videos slash things on E3 and I'm just, I'm over it. And I know Jason and QR too from writing up all the, the, uh, the stuff, but let's go through, I think we'll go through the free to play stuff first. Uh, and then we'll just kind of give our overall thoughts, maybe give a best in show, uh, type thing that we we've normally done in the past. Although, you know, we won't ask the question, which of the big three won because one of the big three wasn't even there. Uh, so we won't do that one. But on the free-to-play front, we have got, uh, in no particular order here, uh, Blanco's Block Party. Uh, if you haven't been watching this one, we've been covering it on MMO Bomb. Uh, very, like, uh, Funko Poppy uh, creation-type game. The whole sp- the spin on it is one of Jason's favorites. Uh, it's where blockchain slash NFTs are used. He loves seeing that in press releases. Uh, they announced, they, they gave some information on the game, but then also announced a partnership with Burberry uh, and Dead Mouse and some more to put uh, exclusive stuff in the game. And, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Jason, I'm going to let you go on this one. I, I know you you have thoughts on this game, so we'll we'll just go go straight to you. The NFT stands for no fucking thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Yeah, Oof. I mean, they had like that 20-minute presentation. It was a long them, panel, of, yeah. I don't remember what it was, Game Fest or whatever, and it, you know that they don't they don't let you see the likes or dislikes on the they, it's the video's up on YouTube. It doesn't have likes or dick slides. I think, but I think the comment might be turned off as well, because they know, <laughs> they know it's not a popular concept. The little little uh, trailer video is like a minute and a half long. Was like a ten to one dislike to like ratio. So, yeah, I mean the tide is turned on NFTs, and again, they could be a thing that somebody somehow somewhere is going to make a lot of money off of, but it's probably not going to be you or me, or there'll be like one or two people who play Blanco, who play other games as well, that do all that stuff, that will make a lot of money. And they'll prop them up as the, these are the guys, hey, you could be just like this guy, make something, yeah, you won't be, though. You just won't be, so. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, yeah. it's a compelling concept. It, it's a compelling concept in the background. Like, owning Q, your own digital goods. Like, when you buy that card from Hearthstone, it is yours. You know, you have that digital item. Uh, Now, and then you are free to do with it whatever you want to, right? If I want to trade that item to Jason for a particular thing that he has in Scavengers, then we have the ability to do that. That's an intriguing concept when you start looking at the broad picture. Now, obviously, Blankos is kind of in its own self-contained bubble right now. It's not reaching out to, hey, all these other games and the digital goods. I admit it is an intriguing concept because there is that I have all these Hearthstone packs. I can disenchant them and make other cards. But what if I don't really have a need for that? Well, maybe I could, if I personally own those digital items, I could get something out of them, a couple cents, a couple bucks, or trade for another digital item. I like the theory. I like the concept of blockchain being used across multiple platforms uh, when it comes to games. And we've seen this in other places too, not just Blancos, but we've seen card games. We we saw a company a little while ago that tried to make that a reality by picking up games to sign onto their platform and they would provide all of that backend stuff. It never quite pans out because there's no real incentive for the companies to want to give you the ability to do that. So it never really kind of pans out. Now, I admit like looking at Blankos, it's kind of cute. It's got the whole Funko, t- uh, you know, the figuring. It's not officially Funko, right? It's you know, no, the, the it figure- is not even a remotely Funko. They're their yeah. own thing. Yeah, and the the vinyl, excluding Funko because it's super popular, the vinyl toy scene is like this very specific thing where people are buying and selling these things for. You know, like I I had a, have a buddy in Germany. Actually, it's the guy that you got the Stadia. 
uh, oh, yeah, thing yeah. from. And for the longest time, his entire income was based off of not Funkos, but these super because they involve like street artists and stuff like that. That's who's designing the the characters mostly. It's like street artists and and everything, the, like that kind of niche. And he was just that was his entire income buying and selling those things. But it's a very specific group. Like it's not widely popular like a Funko is because Funko has, you know, Marvel and whatever and the, these things do not. Yeah, I mean again, it for me it's an intriguing concept, but I think that's all it is. And then there's the the environmental implications, right, of of NFTs themselves, which is a whole nother can of worms if you keep digging into this this type of concept. I don't dislike what they're trying to do. But I'm also at the same time, Jason, I'm just not personally interested in it. Like the environment that they have created where you own all of this stuff and you, you know, you can play the way you want that type of thing. Uh, it is very Minecrafty, for for lack of a better term. And, and that's just not that that's just not me. Now, that doesn't mean that if it was like a triple A looked like Final Fantasy, looked like World of Warcraft, looked like that doesn't mean I'd be interested then either. I think there's something that can be done in the future here. I just don't think Blancos is it. Not yeah, yet. it's like you talk. It's like you talk about yeah. You know, oh, I could take my Hearthstone cards and do this. Well, yeah, if Hearthstone was a part of this, exactly. Yeah, you, it's you, it ain't. Yeah, <laughs> and Blizzard has no reason to do that. It, it, it's like. It's like when I think of I think of it like this. I think of it like uh Well, and I did make that point that Blancos is in its own self-contained bubble. It sure, does not give sure. you that so ability, it was, it was, but in concept, that's where the, the it could go. Well, the thing is, in concept, that's how any currency works. You, you you go into your wallet, you have a piece of paper with some green ink on it. Yeah. In theory, that that's all it is. But we've all accepted that this is worth something. It's worth ten dollars or twenty dollars or whatever. Now I could I could take a piece of paper here and scribble a green X on it or a black X on it with my with my Sharpie. And Mike, if you will take that as currency for me to buy a thing from you, that's fine. Yep. If Q also takes it, that's fine too. But if I bring that down to McDonald's and try to pay for a burger with it, they're probably going to laugh in my face. True. And that's the point of it. If, if everybody accepts my paper with black X on it, then great. But until that happens, it's basically worthless. Yeah, and this was a long Long, like, like literally, they spent like twenty minutes on it. Oh, and I know. The... the chat was not kind. No, chat <laughs> no, was it's not the only kind. time I turned on the chat. Yes, because I just wanted to see it's so what weird. the reaction to it was going to be. I mean, I had a feeling because, um, I mean, I follow a lot of artists on Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that. And one of the big problems with this NFT thing is the effect it has on the art community. There, once the NFTs started kicking in, there ended up being NFT Twitter accounts that literally all they do is like somebody can tweet at them with the the URL for a tweet that you have made and they'll turn it into an NFT for that person, right? They're turning your tweet that you made into an NFT for somebody else to claim. I don't want my own tweets. Uh, right, but I'm saying, like, they're, they're, buy my and, own. They're, <laughs> and, 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 and similar things are ha happening with art, like people just claiming ridiculous stuff as their art, even like, you know, really well-known classical pieces or something, and basically being like, this is mine now, <laughs> right? And then there was something about they were going to destroy an actual piece of art once the NFT was sold, oh and that just completely back... So, I mean, the whole NFT thing to me is just ridiculous. Yeah, if any of you and want to buy my tweets, uh, <laughs> go ahead and sub to twitch.tv slash <laughs> Scroll through, just that's all it'll take, One one sub. Uh, scroll through my Twitter, find the tweet you want. I will print it out, frame it, ship it to you, and delete the tweet. Uh, you can have it. You can have it. Uh, <laughs> for the low, low price of a one-month sub to twitch.tv slash MMObomb. I feel bad talking about Blancos like this because I don't actively dislike the game. Like, they're, they're, you, if you want to play that kind of open-worldy, cutesy adventure and, you know, the... the Plenty of Roblox type stuff and Minecrafty type stuff and 
with this back end of you kind of like, I don't have anything negative to say about the game itself. It doesn't lend itself well to a first look. Yeah, so we haven't done one. And there's still quite a ways before an official release on this anyway. So maybe we'll reconsider it down the road. It, I feel bad bashing them. But the, the reality is I don't really think this is going to work. Yeah, I'm not you're, bashing the game. I'm not even bashing the fact that they want to try this ownership thing too. I have concerns. There's another game that we're going to have an interview down the road with the CEO on this exact topic, that uh, space game, um, a, a little a little further down the road. I mean, I'm, it's an intriguing concept. It's just not for me. And apparently, based on the E3 comments, it wasn't for a lot of people. It wasn't yeah, for a lot of people. This almost seems like an active negative. Like, if you have other games like Roblox or Core, or you could play the NFT game, which is what it's basically known as. Yeah. I think 99% of people are going to choose to play one of the other ones. Yeah. Uh, also on the free-to-play, oops, not anymore front, <laughs> which is my favorite front. I love covering this stuff because invariably we get to talk about it again later. Uh, <laughs> it's just 100% we always get to talk about it later. Hey, you guys remember Rogue Atlas? Um, <laughs> Icarus. Uh, Dean Hall's game, which has been in development for a while and was going to be free to play and everything. Well, that is actually nearing completion. It's going to launch in two months. On August 11th, you will be able to play Icarus. So if you're looking for Dean Hall's next foray into the survival front, and some people were because this one does look like it's doing a couple little unique things and everybody kind of follows what Dean Hall's doing and you know, most of those things don't release, but that's a totally different story. This one is going to release, uh, and you'll be able to play. Oh, wait. You'll be able to play it if you spend twenty six ninety nine or eighty nine ninety nine. Jason, what the hell happened here? This was free to play for the last X years that we've been talking about it. Yeah, like X equals one, because that's about how long it's been. But yeah, uh, I actually, when when I saw those, when I saw those prices, I was like, I was the same thing too. I was like, wait, is this free to play? I had to like go back and look at my articles and look at the, on their website to make sure they had actually said that it was free to play because I wanted to make sure I hadn't screwed that up. No. Because no, frankly, free to play survival is kind of a weird thing. Like it's, I can, I can remember the early conversations I had on this show with Spunkify about H1Z1 way back when we were like, can you do a free to play survival game? Uh, but yeah, they it is not going to be free to play. And they just basically announced that as they announced the launch and the prices and whatever. And I uh, had a nice little uh, commentary about why they're not going to be free to play. Yeah, so Icarus won't be free to play, Q, because it would, quote, get in the way of the game experience and the pitfalls that come with free to play gaming. Yeah, I think you're that two if months you away to... from launch, and you just now figured out that free to play might not work for the game experience you're trying to do. I, I one bullshit. I mean, that is just how, you didn't just now figure out that hey, what we're trying to do free to play really doesn't work. And if you did, I have huge concerns about the game itself uh, to begin with. Q. Yeah, I think, well, one, on the the pitfalls of free-to-play gaming, I feel like at this point, free-to-play gaming has been around long enough that you know where the pitfalls lie, and you should be able to make plans to avoid those. Well, <laughs> well, it, that, well their plan is we're going to make it buy-to-play. Uh, remember, yeah. Bless Online said this same thing, that they didn't like want to be tempted with pay-to-win. No, the the even better is, part. It's just... Well, go ahead. <laughs> But, um, I, yeah, I like you said, it's it, it, it's probably something that they've known they were going to do for a while. They just held out on announcing it. I, I would think, because, I don't, I don't know, do you just suddenly walk in one day well, and you're just like, well, we're not free to play? <laughs> I, can, I can maybe go against that, because they say, the full quote says, from Dean Hall says, We also heard loud and clear from our community that they wanted to avoid the pitfalls of free to play. So this this falls into Mike's old old theory of you want every game to be free to play except the one you really want, then you hope it's buy to play. Yeah. And, and well, no doubt people true. on the forums and, and whatever said, I really like this, I want to buy, I want to play, I want to play a ton of it. Please don't make it free to play. 
Yeah, and they, they, here's the other thing that they that can, that quote continues though. We want Icarus to continuously or continually evolve as a living game, always adding new session challenges and game modes. We think regular chapters and content updates are a great way to deliver that. Oh, okay, so isn't that the Guild Wars Two model? I mean, that sounds an awful lot. What about Atlas today? You know, play. right? <laughs> you know. Where, hey, it's all free to play, and if you want our latest, greatest chapter, X, whatever, or season pass, you know, bundle, five bucks, ten bucks, whatever. It, I, honestly, at the end of the day, I don't care. This isn't a title that I was personally invested in in any way, shape, or form. And if Icarus fans who have played it or are looking forward to it think that this model will work better for what they want, then God bless them, and I hope it all works out. I just have a feeling, Q, that we're going to be talking about this game in five or six months again just like we talked about Lawbreakers, just like we talked about Atlas Reactor, H1Z1, Torchlight Frontiers, all examples Jason gave in the article of games that announced free-to-play, went by-to-play, and then... You know, and yeah, I will acknowledge that there are other factors in why they made that particular noise. It wasn't just their choice to go from free a free-to-play model to a by-to-play model, but that certainly didn't help. We'll see. Uh, yeah, how about some good news? Ooh, do we have good news? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, baby. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coming to uh, Brawlhalla. Brawlhalla is like one of those quietly stupid successful games, Jason. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the Steam charts the other day. And it like keeps rising. It's one of the rare games that like actually keeps it going up. Like, let me see here. Uh, yeah, so like, yeah, from seven from like two years ago. In June of 2019, they had 8,800 players. June 2020, 15, 399. Uh, okay, they only have around 17, 18 now, but still, to keep going up at that rate, it's like, wow. Yeah, it's, and it's very quiet about it. It's just yeah. it's just very quiet about it. They're just like, hey, come on, you know, smack some, smack some people around. And they do all kinds of crossovers. We've seen, like, the wrestling oh, and yeah. all that stuff. But at E3, they announced what you see on your screen in the video right now. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover. It actually started two days ago, uh, so you are able to to get this now. There's a new game mode called Crew Battles, a Shredder and Foot Clan themed knockout effect, signature attacks inspired by some of the Turtles' greatest allies, and you'll even be able to take a romp through the Turtles' home in the sewer uh, for in a free for all or one v one mode. And some of that stuff is actually going to just stick around after the event ends as well too so i like that we're and we're going to talk about something else in a second uh in a few minutes here that does this like we're slowly starting to see that whole fear of missing out uh stuff being extracted from games queue and i do like that where it's hey i don't have time to play it the week that that event runs now obviously things you know not all of it will be available but some things like certain maps and stuff will be available later uh and they look great i think they look fantastic I think Bro Hollow is definitely the right video game format for the Turtles. Oh, 100%. <laughs> and I, I mean, it's kind of great because I think I'm pretty sure that their studio is, you know, another one of the studios out of Atlanta, even though they're owned by Yubi now. Um, but I'm pretty sure the original studio is one out of Atlanta and they were always really, you know, like just nice, a nice group mm -hmm. of people. So it's it's nice to see that they're they're just chugging along and everything but it is the as to the um the the fear of missing out thing Justin and I were actually talking about that the other day because I'm busy doing all the stuff in Genshin Impact right right and I was talking about how they always have something there is yeah. always something and I can't miss doing this thing because if I miss doing this thing I miss getting stuff and he's like yeah that's why I quit <laughs> 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 that is absolutely why i quit right so and and i i think that maybe games are figuring that out like part of the reason you end up losing players is because your players like we want activities we want stuff to do every time we log in but we yeah, don't that's why we built bunk like... beds so there was all that room for activities <laughs> but we don't we don't want to feel like you know oh if i'm not in here every day doing all this stuff and i miss getting this one item then i'm just kind of like yeah. 
you know, missing out on what everybody else is getting and everything. So I think the, the leaving stuff in, and it, it's cool that, you know, it's it, the sewer is one of the things that gets to stay because yeah. who doesn't want to visit the turtle sewer? Jason, I played this once a long time ago with my son, uh, who, who is moderately into it. Like every once in a while, I'll catch uh, Torchwick playing it. Uh, I, you know, if you like smash and you don't want to spend the money on smash, it, it's, it, Clearly, it's doing well. Uh, I yeah. haven't played it in a long time. Have you Have you played this and recently at all? I'm looking up March second, 2016. When Steam says I last played it, so there you so go. So no, so no. Yeah, I, I think like I gotta go. Like, I'm not so yeah, huge into Smash, but I think I should give this one another shot. I think Don't I should. Don't you give love it when Steam shames you? <laughs> <laughs> the, only, the, only, the only thing I had with Smash is like when I I played it when I was at home when I, or not at home, but at a place when I had friends who played it as well. It's like that's fine. When I played Brawlhalla, it's like, okay, I'm going to go up, I'm going to do my, my hit, and I get like a 13, 14 hit combo on me. Like, okay, you're better than me. <laughs> just <laughs> a little. Playing, playing just random a little. matches against people who actually are good at this is, is a little depressing. But that is that is the thing about those kinds of games. Mm -hmm. Like, they, it, you, yeah. I, what, I just tend to button smash on stuff like yeah. that and pray. I learn like one <laughs> combo, and that's it. If I, could, if I can get that off, I feel great. But other people are doing stuff all over me. I'm like, yeah. I may stream that on Monday. I, I may stream that Monday. If you want to come and teach me how to play Brawlhalla, twitch.tv slash MMOBomb on Monday, 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it's been a long time, so I, I, I'd i be basically starting new. Uh, last piece here on, like, the big free-to-play front, and this was kind of after um, E3. This was from Steam, the Steam Next Fest. Uh, if you want to, check out 9 to 5, the 3v3v3 shooter. There is another demo period going on. It's actually right now, so you can check out the game. Uh, through June 22nd. So there's also going to be a QA stream. Not really news to sit there and talk about. Just wanted to bring it to your attention. If you want to check out 9 to 5, you can uh, right now until June 22nd. All right, so Jason, overall impression of E3 and your winner? Um, overall impression was, yeah, like what we've, been, what we've been saying a lot behind the scenes, it's just too long, too spread out, and just too much stuff I just find myself not caring as much about you know it's just like which you know it's sort of how it's been for me for a while now because let's face it, we do have like 80 trillion games coming out every year it's yeah. like i just don't have the bandwidth to care that much about all of them but there were a couple I, I think i completely skipped the nintendo stuff i was like you know it's been like four days already i'm not gonna get any nintendo stuff i'll, I'll just watch recaps later if there's anything coming out so it's nice and and I'm not saying I'm against it, against the E3 Summer Game Fest. I like seeing the new trailers for to some degree, but I, I kind of wish it was more spread out. I, I'll admit I kind of like the way Summer Game Fest is going to do that with you know, yeah. a thing every couple weeks or every month or whatever. And I have to admit, if I were a game developer, I, I kind of would see myself being on the same line as like Sony or someone like that and be like, I don't need to do this. I don't need to do my thing alongside everybody else's thing. I don't know that it's really that necessary anymore to have this long of a thing going on. Yeah, it's kind of been the long-standing argument since the internet, you know, the internet's rise to power uh, on if these conventions are, you know, uh, what they once were. And E3 is one that I just feel like didn't evolve at all. Like, it tried to just continue being E3. And the E3 that, it, um, well, we're the biggest, we're the, this is where everybody comes to release their information every year. In an era pre-internet, obviously that's a big deal. Post-internet, eh, I think you got to kind of evolve a little bit. Now you just, even like digitally, it felt mm -hmm. like, you know, they still have that regard for that show, but they're the only ones that have that regard for that it being that type of show anymore, Q. Not, not to say not that I'm not a fan of going out and doing these physically. I do enjoy that experience, and anybody that can get that experience, go for it. I just don't think it's evolved away from you aren't the biggest dog in this kennel anymore. Um, and so you've got to find a way to become the more relevant dog than to try and continue to be the biggest dog. I don't know. Uh, Q, what'd you think? Who was, oh, Jason, your best, your best in show. Sorry. Uh, it's still got to be uh, probably Bethesda, Xbox, Microsoft, whatever. Q. They just seem to have the most stuff. Overall thoughts and winner? Uh, winner, even though they kind of were, kind of weren't, E3, Devolver Digital. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was, 
E3 as a whole, oh my God, really was that necessary? Four days like, was long. It, no, it's not even that it was four days. Look, the, the stuff that all of well, us were Four there days to watch, was, was long for what they showed. Like, right. there was well, so it, the, much they, bullshit filler. And they could have short that, that, that is the problem. We didn't need the MCs, like, at all. We didn't need any of that hour, hour and a half worth of stuff in between and, you know, shorter periods. We didn't need any of that. I muted it every time it came on. I muted it and just waited for the next panel to come up. We didn't need that. And then there was like this stuff that you could just kind of tell that they went out and just begged people to do something so they would have something in that slot. The diversity <laughs> talk. The diversity talk was definitely one of those because they just slapped that shit together. Yeah, like, well, Bandai Namco <laughs> came out and showed one trailer. Right. And, or, and then and they then gave they, the rest and, of their time for that to that play for all initiative. Uh, and, and, and then, and then, the, and then the, Capcom the just came out and was like, Hey, in case you haven't looked at our YouTube channel in the last six months, <laughs> here's a copy of every trailer that we've put up for the last five or six months. Say, it really felt like they actually didn't have people lining up to do E3 this year. So they just begged people to do it. And this is what they got. And now, I, I mean, I get why they have the hosts, right? You, you do that because even in a digital environment, somebody might write, run short, somebody might run long, right? You scope it out as best you can. And so you use those hosts as a little bit of a buffer, a little bit of a byplay until, all right, it's a quarter after Send Square Enix's video package on. Like, I get all that stuff. I don't, I'm I with mean, UQ. I don't just... need to sit there and watch them host banter for 35 minutes in between the things I get having the hosts to move things along and play buffer, but yeah, 30, like 30 minutes of listening to them. Nintendo, I yeah, thought just... had the best chance to go out and just blow everybody away. They were I'm pumped and primed and they had, you know, in my mind, it's like, I know what you're working on and you don't even really have to go into detail. You just <laughs> have to show a couple of things here and you're going to win. And then they didn't. Although I will, I, I, I do want Metroid Dread. I will buy that on I, day one. I'm I'm mad at Nintendo because they finally were like, oh, here's you know Final Fantasy, you know, one through six stuff, and none of it's for Switch. Yep. Or no, that was so that was Squeenix. Sorry, my brain yeah. farted. Yeah, but nothing, nothing for Switch on 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 that. And then like. Well, the Blanco's thing that you were talking about—that wasn't Summerfest. That was that was E3. Yeah, like they I, spent can't a, tell, I can't tell the difference, and I don't care to tell the difference. They spent frankly. twenty minutes. Well, I because Summerfest there was we really only watched one day of that prior to E3 starting. Yeah, and so they we had just... arguably the biggest announcement <laughs> of the freaking weekend in Elden Ring. Right, right. Like they rolled out, they did their stuff, and they were done. They were gone, and we're just sitting here staring at E3, going, "Okay." Uh, and, so who won? Who won for you? Devolver Digital. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said that. I'm sorry. You, sorry. Uh, because I do like that our co-host on Gaming gone. Gumbo, Yaw, did not get the joke. <laughs> <laughs> that was arguably what made it the best thing ever. Literally after <laughs> I said, hey, I love watching chat when Devolver Digital was there and people that didn't get the joke. And Yod's like, oh, I tuned out. I wasn't paying for another sub thing. And I was like, yes! <laughs> no, I think what he did, he didn't actually watch it because he was using me to keep track of when things were happening, right? Yeah. And I don't think he actually knew that there was the the entire thing. So what he saw was what you put in the show notes. Gotcha. And he went to the website. Oh, and gotcha. It, and it was talking about the that, and he was just like, oh, uh, no. <laughs> and the, as much like, as I love Devolver Digital, I think even they went on too long, too. <laughs> Yeah, it did go, but I mean, the it was just well, obviously more entertaining yeah. than what was yeah. going on at E3. And there was a thing with Ninja and whatever, but yeah. oh god, that was that Ugh. that's a like a real that's a real VTuber who's going to be on G4, which I guess was the point of half of this E3 stuff was to promote G4. Really? Because I didn't even know yes. G4 had a single thing to do with anything. Like, no, I didn't see either. them yeah, at all. Half, like, they were talking about the hosts, and they're like, oh, when they were talking about the little cringy VTuber host and the ninja thing, they, and they were talking to Golden Boy, and they're like, hey, that's one of your co-workers at G4. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I know Golden Boy, but it, as far as, like, <laughs> G4 being in your face uh, about it, or even, like, no, I didn't I even see No, I think it was, like, subtle promotion. Gotcha. No, no, there weren't commercials. I think it was just, like, subtle promotion for the hosts of G4. Like, these people who are here are going to be on G4. 
kind of thing for some Yay. of it. <laughs> um, I'm going to give it to Xbox and Bethesda begrudgingly. Like, it is absolutely my most best in show because I have to pick one. Somebody was the best. Honestly, and I told Jason this and, and Q too, that if I if either one of them had done the show solo, uh, I don't know who the hell I would pick. Like, obviously, Xbox had Halo, which maybe you noticed we hadn't talked about in our free-to-play portion <laughs> of E3. We'll get to it why in a second. Uh, and then Bethesda had, you know, uh, Starfield and stuff. Uh, combined, I think, oh, was yes. intelligent, uh, and it made for, like, the most complete show. And they were the only ones that kind of felt like they did what the audience wanted them to do. They came on, they showed a game, they said 30 seconds of something, they showed a game, they said 30 seconds of something, they showed a game, yes. and they just got their ass <laughs> off the stage when they were done. Xbox has always been like that. Yeah. You know well, the, Xbox the hasn't always been panel? like that. They learned that yeah. lesson like two or three years ago pretty violently and have been <laughs> on message since then. You know the one other good panel? Razors. Razors yeah. panel is actually yeah, yeah. good. But it was it was almost like watching an old WWDC when Steve Jobs was still alive. Kind of good. <laughs> like Yeah. So uh, Linderman online in chats says Xbox was a winner for me. Games, games, and games. Yeah, they just did exactly yeah. what you like. Even if you weren't pumped for their games, you were like, okay, cool. What's this? All right, I'm not interested in that one. Let me wait 40 seconds and I'm going to see something else. And that's all people really want out of E3. I do think personally there should be things like the diversity panels and stuff like that on these large Better platforms. Organized I absolutely and think out. those should be there. But yeah, I, the the diversity panel first off suffered from tech issues uh, that just made it kind of hard to watch. It was like visually not. There was like all kinds the of banners text on flying people's across screens their face. and banners. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't to me. It wasn't a talk on like diversity and what are the core issues and how can we you know do anything about this in game development, in careers, in marketing, in whatever. It was like very self congratulatory for me, and and maybe that's not okay for me to say as a white cis boring vanilla guy but uh, yeah it just seemed very self-congratulatory on well we've got this thing going on and this thing going on when we did this we did this all a discussion that should be had great but i, I thought it was a lost opportunity it wasn't it, poor but it was a lost opportunity it, it also really lost the because i was sitting there watching the numbers yeah at that point so i was watching the panel and i wanted it to be you know be good too but then like you said the tech issues were like right up there up front in your face so you knew that it was just thrown together really quickly and that nobody's because the rest of these three's graphics and everything right were yeah what you would expect yeah and then I'm sitting there watching it, and the number is just like plummet ten thousand, yep. and then ten thousand more, and then ten thousand more, and I'm like sitting there going, the audience that you think you were trying to reach, you were not reaching. Nope. Like this is this is not working, and it's a shame, but it's not it's it's not what you needed. Um, let's go to good ideas and bad ideas. I'm going to throw two at you, and then we're going to circle back to an update on Halo because that was a good idea, bad idea we did last week. Jason, Lord of the Rings Online, we already know, we reported on it is closing one of their legendary servers. It's already closed. You can still transfer your stuff off of it, but effective like a day or two ago, you cannot sign into it at all anymore. Uh, but they're also launching two new servers. So they get rid of a legendary server, and they launch two new ones. Well, Why? Well, these two new ones are a little different. They're new progression servers. So if you want to do that whole start over classic slash progression, uh, play it the way it was released type stuff, great. These do that for you. But one is named Shadow Facts and is actually going to give you faster progression than normal. And uh, the other is named Treebeard and offers slower progression for you. Now, I, while I can appreciate the punniness of the names uh, in correlation to their movement speed. Uh, I'm not really sure who this is for, Jason. Like, if you want to build a progression server, build a progression server. That's fine. EQ does it. EQ2 does it. Obviously, there's Wild Classic. Aeon Classic is coming. Like, all of everybody's doing it now. Uh, fine. Thro but to take that probably very minute portion of your player base that wants to do a progression server 
and then divide it a second time into do you want to level fast or are you more I want the experience and I want this to draw out so let's level slower. I, I don't know. Good idea, bad idea. I think it's a it could be a good idea depending on what kind of feedback they've gotten through the years. Of course, first of all, you look at how many players you have and do you think to first of all can we split that up into halves? Okay, if they think they can, then sure we do two more servers. And I could also believe that while while the while the servers are open, the production servers are open, half the audience was saying, I wish it was faster, and half the audience was saying, I wish it was slower. So I, I can believe that it might be a decent enough idea for them to take this route. So I'll, I'll trust them on their judgment based on the numbers they've seen that it's, it's a good idea. Q, you with them, or is this a bad idea? Um, I mean, I kind of don't. I, I kind of feel like the the breaking everybody apart thing if you're if if you've only got enough people to fill a server in the first place making it into two seems a little weird but I mean it is right like I guess it might be appealing to people to you know like people who want to move more slowly to not be on a server where everybody's rushing and vice versa I kind of like the server where everybody's just you know, where everybody's just doing their stuff kind of at their own pace. Like, when I play, I don't worry about what everybody around me is doing progression-wise. I just, you uh, know, honestly, I'm where I'm at. I, I think this is a horrible idea. A horrible idea. I gotta go, like, and I know I, I probably am wrong. You know, I'm not in touch with the Lodro audience. Never really have been. <laughs> Jason, you do have some past, very in-depth experience in the past with Lotro and, and its audience, but I just feel like it's a smaller game player base wise. The progression server is already kind of a gamble on how many people are we actually going to pull away uh, from, you know, main servers to progression servers, but then to mince that into 50. I don't understand why this maybe tech wise. This is why, but uh, I don't understand why this wasn't handled. Like when Ion introduced fast track servers, do you remember that? That was just one server. You got on the progress, the progression server and then you could change the channel of the server over to fast track, and all it did was up the experience gains. That that was like the only difference uh, in in the in the play. Um, and granted, I mean, I guess that still separates the player base a little bit. Anyway, you're just doing it on one server now. But those players have the ability to swap back and forth in and out of fast track. If okay, Q, I put it on fast track. I caught up to level thirty. I'm going to come back off of the fast track channel. Now you and I can go run that dungeon together. Where when you have two different servers, you you lose that functionality. I think this is a bad idea for a game that I don't know any numbers, you know, exactly. Well, that, but I would problem. imagine has a smaller player base to begin with. I mean, I would assume that since they are closing a server, that they don't have you like they don't they don't have the people to support that server so but then progression servers are a weird thing and i'm yeah. so like i was actually wondering on the slower one is that slower than normal or is it actually just normal pace and it's slower than the fast one no it's slower than normal yeah that is weird well the thing is <laughs> as i look over everquest the, their progression servers they have the same thing they have some that are faster some that are slower so I mean, that's I would not argue un, if I had to look at the two games that EverQuest probably has the larger player base. Well, EverQuest has like ten progression servers too, and this yeah. is gonna have like yeah. <laughs> uh, but I mean, good, that's again, good, if they have like ten times. Then, yeah. Good idea, bad idea. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this one because we don't know a ton about it. But Plus Nine is launching a gaming platform that is aimed at taking those Eastern Asian inspired games that generally don't come west. Uh, and giving you a yearly membership of $50 for access to every game that they put on the platform. Why we're talking about it in the free-to-play world is that they are going to offer ability, uh, ways for you to not have to pay that membership through doing things like sharing stuff on social media or doing in-game objectives in certain games and things like that to bounce that fee down and... From what we've been able to gather talking to the team behind the the thing, you are able to literally make it free. Good idea or bad idea? I, I'm not sure. They're going to have to, I think, I'll go first. I think uh, it could be a good idea if they can get some of the games from the East that people do want to see in the West. If this is a smorgasbord of, you know, the most famous gotcha games in the East, I don't know how well that's going to do over here. 
I do like, in theory, the ability to play or share on social media or beat, uh, you know, beat that boss and get $3 off my yearly sub. All in all, though, I think I got to lean a little more towards bad idea for one key reason. There's no monthly sub, and that is totally mind-blowing. Yes, you can sign up and get the first 30 days for free. So there is that. There is the trial uh, period that you can go in for free and check everything out and then see how realistic it might be for you to obtain a free yearly membership. But I think putting a new untested platform uh, with content that you know maybe people want, maybe people don't, depends on how, what big licenses you can get there, and then pricing it the way that Xbox uh, uh, Game Pass is priced or Sony's PSN is priced, and even then they offer different options. It's not just yearly, but you can pay yearly. And locking it behind yearly, I don't know. I think it's a tough sell. I'm going to go with bad idea that could have been a good idea. Jason? I think the idea is good to you know have a thing for people because a lot of people are just into that sort of stuff they're into the asian games more so than than the western games and really into obscure titles but i think and i think this could even work with the yearly sub or with the yearly sub if they had more content there right now they only have 14 games so i really want to spend my 50 dollars for a year where i want to play 14 games of which even if i'm a big fan of this sort of stuff maybe half of them i'm going to be interested in of course they're going to add more as it goes on but to start with just as a small amount, I think makes it a really tough sell for me. So yeah, again, good idea. Could be a good idea, but right now, probably not. So we're on the same page. Q, are you coming with us or do you have a different opinion? I mean, yeah, I think you're right on the, I think it's something that could work for them in the sense that they're, I mean, cause if I'm understanding this correctly, you doing whatever, some of this stuff lowers your price, yes. right? Yeah, so sure. it, 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 it can progressively lower the price. So your overall yearly price can be different than the $50. Uh, um, but I mean, part of, part of me just feels like the cynical part of me is just like, oh, this is just a way for them to get the players to do the work for them <laughs> with <laughs> the socialing and stuff like that. Well, yeah, that's all that basic stuff that everybody has, but then the actual right. in-game stuff is at least a little different. Right. Yeah. And I mean, in some sense, I, you know, I think it's, it, I think the, the, the full yearly thing does bother me because most people $50 feels like a lot, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but if they had even halved it and did a, you know, like a six month, yeah, six uh, split, three, kind yeah. of like a uh, G force now has you pay 20 something dollars for six right. months. Right. It doesn't, you, you don't feel hard hit for like $25 the same way you do for $50, which yep. is weird when you really think about it. But also when you consider the amount of games and stuff like that, six months might be a reasonable amount of time to tool around in 14 games. You're probably not going to necessarily spend for, you know, like all your time, like you're going to end up wasting the other half of it yep. if they don't add more games. So... Good idea, yeah, bad they, idea. They should have divided it. it I, I think I'm with you. It's, it's. I, I like the general idea, and I do like the, you know, the, the idea of having access to Asian-made games for, you know, free potentially, but yep. not really wanting to drop fifty dollars on something that is fourteen games. We have an update to a good idea, bad idea from last week. It was leaked that Halo was probably going to be doing something free to play on the multiplayer front. In Halo Infinite, a la Call of Duty's Warzone. Uh, and obviously we thought, yeah, that's a great idea. They kind of watched Warzone and they were like, yeah, we're going to do that. We're totally going to do that. But they are doing so much more, Jason, as we revealed on, e uh, or as was revealed at E3 on the Halo Infinite multiplayer front. That's why we didn't cover it above because it was an update to one we talked about last week. And honestly, the more I see from this, generally not too much of a Halo guy, I will play this. I will absolutely yeah. play their multiplayer. And there are some decisions that I think they're making that make me just want to support the direction that this is going in. Yeah, it looks really good just from every standpoint, not only the gameplay, which like I said, I'm not, same as you, I'm not a Halo guy. I play like one hour of Halo total in my life. But I really want to play this. I really want to get into it. 
They're going to have, you know, different kinds of battle types. going to have the, like a 4v4 battle is going to be the basic one. They're also going to have a, a big battle, as they call it, 12v12. And it's going to be capture the flag stuff. You're going to have all the vehicles and weapons and so forth. It's going to have a little bit of a, even a battle royale-ish kind of feel to it. You're going to go around the battlefield and, you know, scavenge. Like, that's how you get, like, your super weapons, apparently, the really good gear. But the, you have to scavenge them. They have limited uses. I think you can even loot them off opponents' corpses. So it, it is an arena, a, you know, instance battle kind of thing, but with a little bit of a battle royale flair to it in that sense. But just in terms of gameplay, it sounds pretty good. But then do you want me to go on to the next Yeah, stuff? go for it. I mean, all they, right, they just right. kept surprising. Yeah. Yeah, in addition to uh, not only the cool gameplay, they're also good. The way they're implementing a lot of the uh, I guess progression, that would be the word to say, progression of yeah. it is going to be pretty cool. Now, they're going to have they're going to have a battle pass, as usual. And I, they didn't actually mention anything. I don't think they mentioned they're talking about free versus a paid one. I don't remember, but they, I think you. I think it is going to be that. It's going to be that so you can buy the battle pass. But the thing is, you can always go back and do the old battle pass stuff if you want to progress on that as well. Yeah. No, so it's not like a lot of I games. mentioned the fear of missing out thing earlier yeah. in the show. This is what I was referencing, that like if there is something in an old battle pass you really want to go get, well, you can go grab that old battle pass and start making progression on this. We all thought this was a good thing on last week's show. I think this is now a great thing, the way they yeah. are going with this whole thing, Hugh. Even if you're not a fan of Halo or, you know, first-person shooters in general, I think you have to be a fan, If particularly if you're a free-to-play player of games, you kind of have to be a fan of the amount of what we hope will end up being high-quality AAA content and a different, somewhat different approach to the whole battle pass fear of missing out uh, dilemma that Destiny 2, which is, you know, one of its primary competitors when it, the multiplayer comes out, Destiny 2 still continues to suffer from. Yeah, I, I obviously I'm not a really big shooter player and I have like a friend who is heavily into Halo. Hilariously, it's Yod's wife. <laughs> like she's the big Halo person that I know. So I, I, I don't really know how Halo pe players feel about it in general, but... Oh, super positive. Think, super positive. Right, like, <laughs> I, I do feel like, um, like you said, the, the, the way that they're just kind of rolling that stuff out and, and eliminating the FOMO and, and, and I mean, and it's, and it's Halo, so it's really attractive to a lot of people in general, and they're not going to have to worry about having players, I don't think. So I think overall, the entire thing's just really Chat, good. Chat, what did you uh, all think of the gameplay we got to see versus the gameplay we saw, whatever, like nine months ago or anything that like led into severe delays when it was reviewed? Let us know in, in chat below. Uh, overall, this went from uh, great, a uh, good idea to great idea. I also like, Jason, that there's going to be like lore and stuff in there. So if you aren't yeah. experienced with the Halo franchise and played through all the, the single player campaigns and everything, you will be able to kind of use the multiplayer to catch up on the mythos a little bit. Um, between uh, that and the all thing the thing is that Halo, would it, would it be Halo without some of the lore? Because even people right. who don't play it like me, like I've at least seen the commercials. They always had really excellent commercial campaigns for Halo. <laughs> So, I know who that I know who that Master Chef guy is. That right, Master Chef. Master Chef guy. No, but I mean, like, did you see some of the commercials they did for yeah. like they always had commercials that really had me wanting to play Halo, yep. but obviously I'd be terrible at it, so it just didn't bother. Ninja says he was on board the from the first time he saw the game, and it went straight on your wish list. I was not on board the first time we saw the game. <laughs> the first time we saw the game, I was like, they need to delay this. <laughs> this is not ready. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, two quick things here. What's going on? Oh, Terra Nova says they didn't show gameplay for the single-player stuff, which was the last time, so you're going to hold out for that. Fair enough. Yeah, it was all multiplayer uh, footage that they showed. Pretty uh, much, yeah. Th throughout everything. Uh, two quick things here. What is going on here? Uh, Activision Blizzard has decided they're going to delay their vote on CEO compensation. We've been reporting on this for a while now. Uh, Bobby Kotick's pay and companies CTW trying to, you know, interfere or at least cause uh, cast a little light on the fact that this this isn't this isn't this isn't good. There is way too much money uh, here. And for some reason, the vote on that compensation is now going to be delayed 
until June twenty first. It was supposed to happen like a day or two ago, I think. The, what was it? Two two days last ago? week. I think it was last, actually week? last week. Was when they're now it's going to be delayed till the twenty first. Now, uh, CTW not happy about this. They're saying it's a desperate attempt to keep Kotick's pay, saying with 86% of shares already voted, it's doubtful that a significant number of shareholders wanted more time to consider the company's executive pay practices. Activision Blizzard retaliating in comments saying that most of the representations of Kotick's salary were misleading and reiterating that base salary and bonuses were reduced already by 50%. And so that type of information needs to be fixed with the shareholders before they cast final ballots. It's kind of hard not to feel like it's just a delay, kick the can down the road tactic, Jason. If, if yeah, I don't know. Hang on, I've got, I've got a live look here. Let me do my Bobby Kotick impression. Hey, Bob. Yeah, Bob, I know, you, I know you're unsure about your vote, but definitely vote for me to get that money. Okay, great, thanks. <laughs> hey, Jennifer? Yeah, yeah, listen, we need to talk. Like, I really need this money, so you're going to vote for me, right? <laughs> okay, great, thanks. That, that's what he's been doing the last week, basically. That's been his job. Yeah. Yeah, trying to sway he's the, the phones. votes. Yeah. It's hard not to feel sli- have this feel slimy, Q. It just really is. I mean... The entire thing that they've got there of, oh, well, we need this extra time so the shareholders can know what the real... Don't the shareholders know that? Like, would, isn't that hope. information that they would know? You would hope. When it happened, because they're shareholders, like... You would hope. Yeah. It's, almost like saying, you know, it's almost like saying we need to <laughs> make sure we count the votes properly to make sure the election worked right, huh? Yeah, heard exactly. That uh, what is I this, mean, by the way? Uh, I don't get it. Uh, <laughs> horns of <laughs> horns of justice is this is that what this is called yes 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 <laughs> the, the, the title makes very little i'm gonna sense, read the honestly. description on steam for you uh this is coming out in july in open beta uh play the brutal ball sport where death is the only referee Master your weapons, spells, and tactics to become the ultimate player in the deadliest tournament in history. Play campaign for a storyline unique to MOBAs, or dish it out online. Dish it out in online multiplayer. So it's kind of taking like a sport with a ball where you've got to take it and score with a MOBA, which on paper to me sounds at least mildly interesting and intriguing. But then I watch the video and I'm like everybody's walking like (laughs) it's just everybody's walking and i get it like you know you can't do league of legends type stuff where some people have massive speed and movement abilities and other people don't in a sport where you got to chase a ball carrier sure some people can be a little faster and a little slower yeah but people (laughs) run in sports like i I don't know. I This sounds, Jason, I, I'll let you describe it the way you described it in chat because I think you're dead on here. And it may be good. I don't know. I just don't have high hopes for it. We'll see next month. It, it's like somebody said, let's, let's, take the, let's take video games and sports, but make them slow. Yeah. Chat, no. <laughs> chat asking if I have the B-roll in slow motion. I do not. <laughs> this, is not this is not even the best let's take a MOBA and make a ball throw, ball scoring sports game free to play that we've seen this week. <laughs> I, I like Pokemon Unite better than this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was uh Oh, what was it? I can't remember. Anyway. Um Breakaway. <laughs> like I, I know it wasn't. Uh, breakaway actually I was. I know it wasn't MOBA. I know it wasn't yeah. MOBA. It was more ball uh, with a hero brawler. Uh, yeah, and yeah. that was very fast paced uh, and everything. Like I'm more interested in let's revisit Breakaway than I am in this right now. We we just need we need a standalone hut ball. <laughs> <laughs> Bioware's got to do that. Right. Right. All right. Let's finish up. Slide over. Do the weekly bombs. <laughs> Chat and YouTube, as I'm sure, staying tuned for the first look on that one next month. It's gonna be it's gonna be two hours long. So that's See, all it, we play a match. It does have a uh, 
like a single player story ish kind of thing. Oh, I'm, which was like I'm the sure only it thing. is top notch <laughs> narrative. I'm sure. Which is the only you idea know. that I thought was kind of good because Smite years ago did like an RPG kind of thing when they first introduced uh, Discord, I think. And I, I liked that idea, but <laughs> could yeah. you imagine playing a single player RPG thing in slow motion? <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. I mean, it'll be top quality <laughs> narrative, Jason. Top quality. I'll read it to you as a bedtime story. <laughs> Aw, sweet. Uh, yeah, I'll read it to you as a bedtime story. Uh, I'm going to give an A-bomb to E3 in general, but specifically Square Enix. You know my love for Square Enix. I host a show about Square Enix. But honestly, I think they totally botched their E3 presentation. I mean, there were some things we just didn't expect to see. But then there, I mean, you have a big... New IP coming out in January, seven months from now, uh, supposedly. Uh, and it was totally absent from the show. No Final Fantasy 16. And we got early leaks that there wasn't going to be a lot of Final Fantasy stuff there. And that proved to be true. But I think that was just totally a missed opportunity. I think Square Enix's presentation fell flat for me as a Square Enix fanboy. So an A-bomb to E3, but specifically Square's presentation. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, I'm going to give an A-bomb to Digital Extremes. Mike knows why, of course, because <laughs> this is something we've talked to them about. We've even, we, 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 they've been doing it for years now. We even talked to their PR about this. Yeah. Two two but, years but, ago was when I was talking to their PR department about this. Yeah. So let me read from their pro, the latest press release, the little boilerplate at the end that talks about the company. It says, about Digital Extremes. Founded in 1993 by James Schmaltz, Digital Extremes ranks as one of the world's top independent video game development studios. <laughs> they have not been independent for two years, I think, now? Oh, it's more than that, yeah. Two years, three years? They were bought it's really by Lay easy U, to lose track of time. And then Layu was bought by Tencent. So yeah, you guys are not indie anymore. Stop putting that in your press releases. <sighs> Q. Um, I'm going to give a tentative de bomb to the Ion Classic server because unlike everybody else, I actually enjoyed Ion, so I'm kind of excited about it. <laughs> uh, from chat, uh, Old Glory says, de bomb to Lost Ark. It was really fun to play a game since it tried it in RU servers and in the end could not decide what class to play. A bomb to Ark chat. It was filled, I assume, with negative toxic players already. Uh, I enjoyed Technical Alpha, too. I very much did. Uh, Ninja Pandas, dub bomb to Sega for fixing the lag on PSO2 New Genesis. It's fixed for you. I still I still occasionally get it. Uh, and for finishing the main story and a massive A-bomb to my keyboard for glitching and just constantly typing forward slash during the cast to the point of causing a massive panic. Also gave me a quad cheese or meat fest pizza and Halo Infinite. There you go. Order it up. Order it up. From the viewers on YouTube, Breckner Catalan says, A bomb to you guys for going against your we don't cover mobile only releases by featuring punishing Gray Raven in your news articles. So if you only noticed that one, we have snuck a little bit more uh, mobile in just to kind of gauge, you know, whether you're going to come to the damn site to check that type of stuff out. So we've been covering a couple of like bigger mobile only stuff or a little more into like the RuneScape mobile, which we just launched. We would have covered anyway. But yeah, we have been dabbling just to see if if you're if there's an interest and you're going to come to mmobomb.com and look at it, then we'll cover it. But, you know, you got to come to the freaking site. You don't come to the site, then it doesn't matter anyway, right? Just take the site down. Send us all home. Uh, uh, go ahead, Jason. Well, we're, all, we're all kind of home already. Yeah. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, uh, Old Glory, sorry, it I... is for science. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I do like, I just noticed Jason's comment in chat about Horns of Justice. Says, the horns are too heavy. That's why they walk. Yeah. <laughs> that that could be it. Could that, be. That's could very be. valid hypothesis. All right. Slayer Master PWI says that, well, Fredo, your read of my debom was perfect. Nailed it. 10 of 10 performance. Just the way I said it as I was typing. Yeah, because I was with all the shouting and everything. Yeah, I think. yeah. from last week's show. <laughs> Go ahead, Q. Uh, TKL2399, A bomb to Asmund Gold saying he's going to try Final Fantasy XIV. The guy is one of the most toxic people out there, and his fans are no better. The game needs a minute like it needs to knock it back in charge. A bomb plus, worse than your standard A bomb. Oh. 
it should it, should that be worse or should is that it on the chart be minus yeah, that's like an, I, I i think <laughs> i think we've gone off the charts here <laughs> i think yeah i think we're we're somewhere else uh to uh to work to game for trying to pass this off as positive for the xiv community uh, I mean, okay, I'm not going to go into this uh, on here. Go check out the Relic Grind, which I just posted this morning from last night. We do talk about Asmongold. We don't talk about Work to Game or Ginger Prime in this one. Honestly, I can't go with you. Like, I don't generally find Asmund to be extremely toxic in and of himself most of the time. There are some topics where he has gone off the rails. And I think anytime you get a large number of fans together in anything... There toxic. are toxic people, uh, and th that portion of the audience becomes bigger and bigger as the general audience gets bigger. So I'm not as opposed to it as you are. I feel like the FF14 community will weed some of that out if it does come, and, and there there's a little more moderation in it than other games. Honestly, I do think it is always good when the your game of choice gets high-profile eyeballs, large numbers of eyeballs. Um, I don't know. Go watch. I, I I gotta. I think I gotta just uh, disagree with you, to the the extent you take it to. So, agree to disagree there. I guess. Uh, Yami Kami A bomb also thumbs up to the manager who thought it was a good idea to make the newest Masquerade game a battle royale, up his bum hole. That is. Oh, I see what you did there. It was sneaky. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, there are like two to three Battle Royale games that are doing good. All the others fa failed. Well, Fredo's comparisons to MOBA a few years ago is quite fitting. How many of those MOBAs are still around and doing well for themselves? Yeah, about three. Four if you consider Hero, Hero of the Storms a MOBA. Anyone remembers it's Master X Master? Well Actually, yeah. When Q and I were just talking about Master X Master two days ago. Mm. Uh, Paragon, yeah, because... Heroes of New Earth, Gigantic. I can name so many more. No? Yeah, that's my point exactly. Go ahead, Jason. A box says weekly bomb. Couldn't think of one, so I'm going to give a dub bomb to counter the A bomb about Asmon Gold trying about Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> as a former WoW vet myself, I'm always open to more people trying it out. And while I don't think it's a big deal that, as some people are making it out to be, he seems pretty level headed about it and is willing, at the very least, to give it a fair go. Yeah, that's kind of where I landed, Box. It's like I'm not a huge fan of his. You know, I don't follow him or I watch a couple videos here and there for more for Snowbound and stuff. But yeah, I'm all for anybody checking it out. And he does seem to be pretty le level headed about it. Will his audience be? I don't know. And I expressed that concern on, on Relic Grind. Go ahead, Q. Okay, uh, I'm going to need help on pronouncing this. I, I think it's Jabe. Jabe. Aguilas. 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 Uh, yeah, please tell us how to pronounce that. Anyway, first comment. Oh my God, the first time in my life. Congratulations. <laughs> like, like literally your first comment on the internet? Congratulations. Anywhere? Just on our show. I think they're just very excited. They got to be the first person to comment on something on YouTube. Oh, it might be they're, they're first. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They were mounted. the very first comment. I mean, they did it wrong. They didn't say mounted, uh, yeah. but that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We, we still love you. We still love we still you. Love Congratulations you. and welcome. Welcome. Hope you enjoy. Tell your friends. Uh, question of the week last week. It's official. Lost Ark is coming and it's coming pretty soon. Are you excited? Why or why not? Misfit Rain says question of the week. Lost what? What, what did I lose? What did I, what did I lose? I'm going to go with not excited. Go ahead, Jason. <laughs> You lost your ark, just like Noah. After he parked it, he's like, where did I park this thing? That's why you have the dove. <laughs> uh, Wim Danverstraden says, Lost Ark looks interesting. I might give it a try. Cute. All right, Jabber. Uh, no idea how to answer this, honestly. I was lucky enough to get invited to the alpha test this week, and the game itself looks and plays really nice. But it's been so many years. Maybe if it came out before Path of Exile 2 and Diablo 4 announcements, we'd have a different conversation. Plus, there's a topic on Amazon Games who don't know how to release a game without shutting it down right away, which is a very fair point. <laughs> uh, who's already been criticized for New World's greedy cash shop, and the game isn't even out yet. Many countries are IP blocked from this too, I assume because of the gambling laws. The game itself may be hyped, but Amazon ruins it for me. They don't have my trust yet. Yeah, that was something I noticed in the technical alpha too, Jason, is that the countries that don't like the loot boxy stuff, mm -hmm. this was blocked from being able to be played in those games. Mm -hmm. uh, so is it because of loot boxy stuff coming? I don't know. 
We'll see. Earthly Power. Great YouTube name. Earthly Power. Uh, Question of the week. I definitely will not be playing Lost Ark. Not a game that has been on my radar. radar. Also, Amazon being attached to this is red flags for me. And who knows what the cash shop is going to be like. If it's pay to win at all, and that isn't changed to not being pay to win at all, I'm calling it now in a year or less up to a year and a half. It will, at most, it will be shut down. Generally, Zach Sharps, who played on the Korean servers or on the Russian servers for till endgame, had the impression that it was not pay to win at all, that there was optional stuff you might want, but it was not pay to win at all on those servers. That was his personal opinion. I don't have one to express. Just thought I'd throw it in here for you, uh, and we'll see what happens. Go ahead, Jason. Mark Gozis, I tried Lost Ark, and I don't know. Controls and skills are a bit weird. Most classes feel the same. I don't like animation locks and no WASD controls. Mobs are standing there waiting to be beaten by sword or whatever. Too weird for now. I'm going to give another try when it comes out, but I'm less hyped now. Um, I found a controller worked a bit better in in my my estimation, Marco. I wondered about that. Yeah, I, I it was kind of wonky, the controls for me, too, on the mouse and keyboard. When I picked up the controller just to see if it worked, uh, there is a fair amount of, like, hold, kind of like Diablo, right? Hold this button and use A, B, X, Y. Uh, hold this button and use ABXY, and it's a different set of abilities type deal. But yeah, so maybe try that out when we get to beta. Go ahead, Q. Yummy Kami. I'm excited for Lost Ark. Been a fan of Diablo style games ever since, well, Diablo, though Diablo 3 is boring. <laughs> I did not even finish the demo content, so I'm looking forward to this game. Not thrilled about the Amazon games part, though. Uh, Edgar says time gated content in Lost Ark will kill all the population in one week tops now i can't speak to the time gating that's done in it obviously i just took part in the technical alpha and it was one week long uh so i can't speak to that i know that zach did reply to edgar on here you know kind of arguing against this point uh saying a lot of games you know popular mmos world of warcraft 14 all of them they do time gating to a certain extent i think edgar was saying that this is a little more than a typical time gate so we'll see I think it'll take a little longer than one week to kill uh, Lost Ark if if Lost Ark gets killed. I think it'll take a little longer than seven days. <laughs> Go ahead, Jason. Yeah. The call twenty three ninety nine is question of the week. Zero interest in Lost Ark. Just doesn't look very fun. I'm not really a fan of these type of games outside of Torchlight, especially ones trying to pass themselves off as MMOs. Yeah, I mean, if you don't like this type of game, then you're not going to like Lost Ark. I don't think it does anything no. that changes the the way this type of genre feels. Go ahead, Q. Uh, box lost ark looks interesting and i'm glad for all the folks hyped for it personally i dropped off arpgs in that style many years ago after getting bored of poe hopefully lost ark does just as well in the the i think it's supposed to be here uh than it did Whatever. as it did in korea <laughs> like, yeah i'm not sure what happened yeah. to the words in that little spot so i i was surprised by how diverse the answers were so great answers by all of you thank you so I, much i feel like go ahead jason I feel like we're we're a little too we're we're seeing everything through Zach's rose colored glasses a bit <laughs> for as hype as he is. I played it. I, I mean, I was playing because this is a kind of game that I'm I'm generally interested in. And what I was able to play during the, the I've like I was you know mostly happy with the controls were weird. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I do have weird. the same cash shop concerns that everybody that did express cash shop. So like I feel like I'm a little you know maybe like a six or a seven. What I played, I liked. I do want to get back into it, but I still have reservations, particularly on the Amazon side of things. So I don't think anybody was too far uh, to the extremes here. I, I kind of trust Zach, though, too, because he tends yeah. to be oh, crappy yeah. about stuff. Yeah. Uh, question of the week. This week, obviously, what did you think of E3? And what was your favorite announcement? That doesn't mean like their whole presentation had to be good, but what was your favorite announcement and it doesn't have to be free to play. It can be free to play or not. That's up to you. What do you think of the overall conference? What was your favorite announcement? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll feature it on next week's show. While you're there, don't forget your weekly bombs. Dub bomb for something good, a bomb for something bad in the world of gaming or just life in general. Until next week, Q, where can everybody find you? On Twitter, Quentin. Jason. On Twitter, Winter Informal, streaming at twitch.tv slash Jason Winter. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me personally there at MagicMan1, but more importantly, follow at MMOBomb on Twitter so we can tweet at you with all the giveaways, interviews, first look videos, free to play cast, news, and so much more. Until next week, stay safe. We'll see you on the servers. <laughs>